RSK, let it play, boy. You have one minute before service starts. RSK, let it play, boy. seconds to get it together go get your mother your father your sister your friend your uncle your brother you can even get the dog i don't care but just make sure that you come wcye junior high it's about to be on and popping let's go WCYE Junior High. It's Jayla and Janae, and we're here to tell you that service starts every Sunday at 10 a.m. And make sure, make sure that you like and subscribe to WCYE Junior High Studios and hit that notification bell for notifications whenever a new video pops up. Did you hit that share button? 
What are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit it now. Worship. With what's beneath the surface do you love to worship? Is he worth it? Or do you love the chord progressions? And are you thrilled that the worship leader sings so impressive? Do you love the build, the rhythm, but is Jesus lost in the feeling? Is your praise personal or conditional? And do you understand that worship is his gift to you? This isn't how you worship, but it is when you worship. Because when you love to worship, you may go to work, but you come to worship. You feel the warmth of the sun in worship like, thank you, God, for your blessings. Don't be numb to worship. This is not a genre, but a gene. A gene that is present in the DNA of all of the redeemed. We don't worship to be cleaned. We worship because he cleaned us. And sometimes worship is a war to fight what tries to come between us. The spirit intercedes and this worship becomes real as if we are at his throne pouring perfume on his feet, consumed with a peace that won't be moved, it completes us. And yes, we are giving to God, but not out giving what we're getting from God isn't this odd. You see, God is pouring the fuel of faith in our heart. The fire overwhelms and sets passion ablaze in our heart. And as we gaze at the cross with eyes of faith, we still find ourselves surprised by grace. This compels us to worship with our beings, our life, our breathing, our passions, our seeing. Keep believing, never ceasing this offering of joyful proclamations to let the world know about the God who saved us. When is the last time you picked up his word and said, God, I'm reading to worship, not just to know how to worship or become inspired to worship, but believing your word is true is a form of worship to you. Sometimes being still is worship. Sometimes shouting loud or bowing down or looking unto the hills is worship. Sometimes you may raise your hands, other times you'll be undone. You may laugh or you may cry so hard no words can escape your lungs. You may be surrounded by the body of Christ or alone in your room seeking the Father of lights. I'm not against a full band, bass, guitars, keys, drums, leads, lows, as long as every pluck, every stroke, every hitting of the keys, a pounding of the drum is done for the honor and glory of the sun. People, God's people, we should love to worship because he loved us first when we didn't deserve it. WCYE Junior High, of course the greatest place in the world to be. We are so excited that you decided to come back and share this time with us today. Hey, listen, on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Creflo and Daffy Dollar, our senior youth pastors, Anthony and Constance Adams, and of course myself, Pastor Alyssa Orell, the pastor with the blue hair, because I really do care. We're so glad that you decided to come and spend this time with us today. So listen, today's a little different because we got the parents in the building. Listen, I decided to ask questions after you've been doing this whole series on honor and I've been asking kids questions. So we decided to write them down and give them to the parents. So today's going to be a little different. They come in raw and in effect, kids get to respond. You might see yourself on here. You might see some of your friends, but it's real and it's real time and in real effect. So we just want to go ahead and jump right into it, but I do want you to consider getting your mom, dad, uncle, grandma, everybody, get in the room right now and let's hear the answer to these questions because some of them may be ones that you wanted to ask. Some of them may be ones that you were too afraid to ask, right? But you really want to know the answer and you wish that your parent answered them. Listen, you can literally replay this message and you can ask your parent each and every one of these questions. 
and get your answers. Listen, it's amazing to see what will happen just through some genuine, regular conversation. But let's go ahead and pop into it right now. I want to go ahead and pray our service in because we're looking for it to be amazing. Father, thank you so much for this time today. We thank you for the opportunity for parents and kids to get together, to have conversation, and to hear your voice, Lord God. Holy Spirit, lead, guide, direct, even through this time. We thank you, Lord, for all that you will bring into fruition. We thank you for wisdom on both parts, for parents and for kids. We thank you in advance for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you want to listen up? Let's get ready to rock and roll. And so here are some of the questions that I asked, well, that the kids asked the parents. Are you ready? Let's go. Question number one is, what is the hardest thing about being a parent? Let's see what the parents had to say. Hello, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Jayla. And welcome to Can, Can We, we Talk? Talk. Can we talk for a minute? All right, that's it. I'm not doing it. Hi, I'm Shabrandria, and this is Lauren, and welcome to Can We Talk? The hardest thing about being a parent is creating balance, creating balance for yourself as a person, and creating balance in how you maneuver um, life with your child. Um, how you parent them at two is not the same way you parent them at 12. So having the balance, not creating a rigid frame of mind or framework of parenting, but knowing there's always fluidity in how you parent. And I agree with that. When it comes to being a child, it's hard to accept that they are the parent and how they parent you, They even though there's no rubric and they don't know exactly all the time what they're doing, they know you, so they're going to parent you how they will parent you. And it will show greatly in your older years. The hardest thing about being a parent is allowing my child or, well, yeah, my child to experience things on her own because there may be type of situations that I have experienced as a, as you know, your being your age back in the day, that I may say, oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to help you, but then I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't help you because your experience, I want your experience to be different from my experience. Yeah, you got scared when I walked down the street. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> what? I, I was going to the street. I know, but it's just... I, that's you what you're supposed sat to there do. And you was like, "Oh my god!" That's what you're supposed to do as a as a parent. I'm supposed to be concerned. To, to me, if you're a parent and you're not concerned, that's a problem. I, I just wanted to go to the football game. Yes, like, yes, yes I was concerned go, like about was you going to a football game. And yes, like, and it was around the corner. It was literally, literally <laughs> the Yes, I was. <laughs> You sat there and contemplated for two days. <laughs> it was two days. Yes. Uh, yeah. You only said yes after T.T. said. Okay. Let yeah. Her go. Okay. Well. Well. Thank your auntie for your auntie <laughs> easing my. Uh. Well, I guess you know your aunt. <laughs> you you have to you gonna have to tell her thank you fifteen million times. She had to tell me to be quiet. But yes, because she she, she said wait Pre like, let her go. She was like <laughs> she. She's okay. She's not gonna do anything. Oh God. So you you your your auntie uh, helped with that. I forgot about that's that. That's still funny. I forgot about that. That's still gonna be funny. I know. <laughs> All right, so here's the next question. And this one probably is what a lot of you've been feeling. This question says, How do I tell you that I'm not feeling loved? without you yelling at me and just telling me I am love. Parents, take that one. Um, I think it's the responsibility of the parent to create a safe space and a safe environment. Um, I don't think that's the responsibility of the child. And um, hopefully through communication and um, it's a good question. I would say hopefully through communication um, and 
time and patience they spend with their Yeah, kids. chime in, yeah. Yeah. It should be a conversation prior to before it gets to that. Yeah. And I think that's what I mean in regards to creating that safe space. Yeah. But it's actually very hard for us to go to our parent or our guardian with um, the problems at school, problems that they're going through in life, mostly because kids think that their problems are not problems. They feel like what they're going through, nobody else is going through in the world, and that's not true. Right. But they do need to know that they are loved, that they do care for them, and they, even though they're not your friend, they are someone that you can look up to and talk to about your everyday problems. And I think you brought up a good point. It's, I think it's also about validating how the child feels. Like you said, sometimes children don't feel like their problems are problems, but there are problems because it's a problem to you. And that's, a, that's also part of creating that safe space for them to let me know. Ah, this question right here. A lot of kids are asking this question. And this comes directly from, I won't say his name, but it comes directly from in the house. And the question is, why can't we just have fun? Like, do what we want to do. Why can't we just have a good time? Your parents are always so serious. Like, how come we just can't have fun? Oh, because that's easy. That's not real life. Um, and we're training you for real life. And while, got to keep it 100. I mean, um, in a fairy tale, we have fun and do whatever we want, whenever we want, how we want to do it. But if we did that as parents, y'all wouldn't eat. Y'all wouldn't have no place to live. Because we, we don't want to go to work a lot of the time. We don't want to cook some, a lot of the time. We don't want to do your laundry. We don't want to take y'all, be your Ubers. Um... But we do it because we love you. And love is not just, it's not a feeling, it's a decision. And it's also a sacrifice. And we as parents, we sacrifice going to work and providing that safe atmosphere and environment for you. So we're trying to train you up for real life. So just because you feel like you want to do it doesn't give you the right to do everything you want to do. And I think this goes back to the last answer, communication. Some kids feel like, oh, my mom's telling me I can't do this and that. And they have a reason. It's just some parents don't feel like they should explain, and they shouldn't, but they should know that what I went through or what I'm going through, it already happened before. So I'm doing this because I know the consequences and I know the effect of how it happened. That's a good point, Jay. Next question up, parents, listen, all of us have been asked this question. Some of y'all are rocking it. Some of y'all are like, no. But the question is, when can I get an allowance? Parents? Oh, I don't. <laughs> no, I you don't. don't get an allowance. Reason being, I have to ask you multiple times to do the simple things. Like, yes, I understand you have homework. Yes, I understand you're tired. But guess what? Mommy's tired too. Mommy has to go. I have to go to work. I have to deal with your sister. And then, you know, I I'm I mean simple things like Lauren, can you undo can you empty out the dishwasher? Well, I got this, I got this. Okay, what about what mom has to do? You see what I'm saying? Like or or you see you see that there's dirty dishes and you know there's room in the dishwasher. But I got to ask you to fill the dishwasher like simple Simple stuff like that. Like, you can put the dishes in a dishwasher. I shouldn't have... To me, if you see something that needs to be done, or if you see clothes... Because, you know, I'm bad about that. I don't always fold up everything the day of. But if you see clothes sitting in that basket, and you know they need to be folded, if you're taking a break from your studies, you can sit down and fold that stuff. I don't care if you leave it on the couch, but you folded it up. You see what I'm saying? That helps me when you... When you take initiative, that's why when you do take initiative, I say something. I say, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Because that's one less thing I have to do. Because remember, it's just me as far as I know. your parental units right now. It's just it's yeah, just me. I know I probably should put that first. I just don't want to get kicked out of none of my classes. I, like, I understand because, yeah. yes, school is important. But helping mom is important too. You see what I'm saying? Like simple. When you do simple stuff like... If you put up the dishes and, you know, because, you know, we got our little chart and all that, that chart system and all that. So when you when you do something and it's not your day, 
because you know I'm tired. That means a lot to mom. Like, I'm learning, because you know mommy's learned about herself, too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning that's one of my love languages, acts of service. So when you do little stuff, that means more than, well, that to me, that means it just as much as if you just said I love you for no reason. To me, that means a lot. The fact that you took the time to, hey, let me straighten this up. Let me... Let me do this for mom right quick. You know, that's one less thing I got to worry about. That's one less thing mm -hmm. I have to say, oh, wait, did I do X, Y, Z? Like, like okay, remember that time you, because you know you and your sister bring your lunch. Yeah. Remember that time you you made popcorn, but you didn't want to take the whole thing. And you was like, oh, mom, I put it yeah, in I'm the... Yeah, I'm going to eat all that. He was like, I put some in the bag for Jasmine. In my mind, I'm going... It like so small though. Like, it's small to you, but to me, it was like, oh, that was cool. Like, thanks. I don't have to. Well, what else I'm gonna put in her lunchbox besides her sandwich and her juice? I knew. Okay, Jasmine can have popcorn for snack that particular day because you had made popcorn for you, but you took the time to actually put it back. Not just, oh, mom, there's some popcorn in there if you want to give it to her or whatever. The fact that you actually put it in the bag. And put it to the side and told me, hey, it's over here. So I knew to grab it and put it in her lunchbox. That meant a lot to me because that was, because, you know, since she eats snack, I'm going, oh, Jasmine's snack covered. Her sister covered her. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's, and that's why I be telling you things like, I know Jasmine is annoying sometimes. Because she's five. <laughs> but that's why I be telling you things like, you have to take care of her. Help me take care of her and nurture her because you see how me and your aunt's relationship is. That's what your grandparents taught us. That at the end of the day, if something happens to your grandparent, that's all I have. It's mm -hmm. you, your TT, and your sister. That's it. I mean, yes, we have extended family, but like... The tight knit thing, I mean, that's like all I Georgia, have. Like most of them. Right. So that's why I'm saying, like, little things like that, that goes a long way. Long. And your aunt has said to me, maybe we should revisit the allowance thing. If mm. you could take more initiative. That is a good question. Oh, it's a great question. Okay. So um, I think it's also a, a balance, I guess that's the key word today, um, because I don't think it should be an entitlement because I'm a certain age, I ought to get. At the same time, um, I don't, I, do I think kids should work for some of their, their allowance? Yes. But I don't want you to feel like if um, chores is tied to allowance, so if I don't feel like doing, getting money, I don't have to do chores. So I think it's really at a time of, um, uh, the best time is a transitional space for the kid okay. when they're maturing. Um, and I think it, there should be some type of um, flexibility. It shouldn't be just the parents saying, you're going to get paid this amount, this amount, this amount, but it should be a conversational piece. Um, and maybe also goals. You ask the child, like, what do you want to buy? What do you want to, what do you want to purchase that's big, medium, small? And now the, their allowance, they're working towards something as opposed to they're just having money just to buy candy and, um, Takis. We're not doing that. Um, I do agree with that. And I do believe that society made sure that they put in or they embedded in kids' brain that, if you do good, you will always get a reward, and that's not true. It's just about integrity, doing things that you know are good, and you shouldn't always be or get a reward just because you're doing good because God, he never really got a reward, and he always did good. Jesus, he never got a reward, but he always did good. That's my baby. That's a good answer. Okay, I'm going to stop embarrassing my dad. <laughs> now... Your kids are finally concerned about you, but they're concerned about them. So here's a question that they ask. How do you not get aggravated? What's your thought on that, parents? Ooh, when someone finds the answer, let me know. Um, how do I not get aggravated? Well, I honestly, um, 
I go to my father. I go, I go to God like a daddy. I mean, I've learned to rant and complain to him, and then he gives me the wisdom on how to move with things. You're going to get aggravated. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to feel some kind of way about things. Um, so for me, I try to not go in, call somebody first before I talk to him. Um, and he, that helps me. I also try like deep breathing, calming down, trying to not think with my emotional brain, but my methodical one. And, um, and then act after I thought through it. Um, I would say for me, as a student, as a child, as a sister, a lot of aggravation comes your way. So, especially in school. So how I deal with it, I may just take some breathers or I would just, you could do it right in that moment and people don't even have to know, you could do it in your brain. Just say that, or give a prayer, just say that, okay, what they're doing isn't right. And you have to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong in that moment to provoke them. So they wouldn't, they would just be doing it just, just to be doing it. And that happens a lot. So I would just say, okay, do I understand why they're doing this? No. Do they have a reason to be doing it in their own brain? Yes. But I would just take a breather, pray about it, and ask God for the wisdom and the guidance because we do not always know what to do. You took my answer, but it's okay. Okay, parents, this next question that's up. Now, this is one of the ones that I would categorize into the category of ain't none of your business, but <laughs> we said today that we would put it all out on the table. So, question. Your kids want to know, how much money do you make, mama? Go ahead and answer that question. Let's go. None of your business. I already knew the answer. <laughs> En enough, <laughs> enough for you to have food. Enough for me to clothes, still be standing here alive. And things for your health. Because yeah. all of this ah. is expensive. <laughs> Woo! These answers right here are on and popping. Now this question right here, parents. Hold your seat. The question is, when can I go to parties alone? Mmm, 26. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know because I know what I did. You went with me to At the parties? last party that I had. Well, that was absolutely amazing. The level of authenticity, the genuineness that came out, the real deal. I told y'all it was going to be the real deal. And I hope that you guys at home take the opportunity or wherever you're watching this. Take the opportunity to ask these questions. Get your answers, kids. Figure out what's going on in your kids' minds, parents. Listen, we're so grateful that you took the time with us, and we want to make sure that we give you an opportunity to really move forward after these questions. If you're sitting with your kid and or you're sitting with your parent, and you guys may never have, you know, put yourself in a position to have the right relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I want to give you that opportunity right now to just pray a prayer with me to make sure that, you know what, the things that we've been talking about and the Jesus that we're talking about, that he's in your life too. Say this prayer with me right now. Father, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe in your word. I believe that your body was broken for me so that I don't have to be broken in any area of my life. Your blood that was shed I believe that it covers my sins, past, present, and future. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if this is the first time that you have prayed this prayer, then welcome to the family. You'll see right here on the screen that it says, I am S-A-V-E-D, I'm saved. Do me a favor and text to 51555 that word right there, I'm saved. Do that right now or as soon as we get off, because I want to go ahead and send you a gift that's going to help you, your entire family, if you've said that prayer for the first time, to continue in the journey that you have just taken by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen, we're so grateful that you came. We're so grateful that we had the opportunity to have a conversation 
and just talk it out. My name is Pastor Alyssa Orell, the pastor with the blue hair, because I really do care. Oh, and guess what? <laughs> guess what? Guess what? I love you so much, and I'll see you next time. Let's go. This bread represents of Jesus Christ's body over dying on the cross for our sins. You may eat. This this juice right here represents of Jesus' blood for him dying to save all of us. You may drink. Now, may you please bow your head and pray. Thank you, Heavenly. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Thank you for letting us all see another day in our life. Make it. Thank you for letting us see every age that we made to see our birthday. Amen. Offering is about giving to God from your heart. You should never want to give to God because you feel forced. It is all about the positioning of your heart. God wants us to have a heart to give. That's the only way giving and offering will be beneficial. 2 Corinthians 9-7 says each of you must make up your own mind about how much to give, but don't feel sorry that you must give and don't feel that you're forced to give. God loves people who love to give. Text WCYE team to 74483 to text to give. Lord, thank you for this day that has been sown. And we are blessed that we are able to give. Amen.